welcome, a very warm welcome to The Green Bean. My name is Katie and I'm recording this in my studio in the Banai Brokenio National Park in South Wales, which I have recently moved to. I've lived here for about six months. If you watched my older videos, you will have seen much appreciation for the landscape of Dartmoor, where I used to live for 10 years. And now I'm settling in, enjoying my new landscape here in the mountains in South Wales. This episode is full of finished projects. I've got some illustration goodies to share with you, something I've been working on for a client, which I'm very excited to show off. I have a finished knitting project and a finished spinning project to share with you too. Um, but before we dive in, let's have a moment to say thank you to my patrons who make these podcasts possible. I've been making videos here on YouTube for five years now, which makes this podcast project one of my most consistent and biggest creative projects to date. And I love making videos, make no mistake about that. Um, but I couldn't do it without financial support and these videos are entirely made possible thanks to my generous supporters over on Patreon. If you are one of those lovely folks, thank you so much. I'm so incredibly grateful for your support. In return for financial support on Patreon, I offer bonuses like access to these episodes a little bit early before everyone else gets to see them, access without adverts, extra episodes every month, as well as discounts in my shop. So if you enjoy my videos and you feel able to contribute, please consider doing so and be part of what makes these videos possible. Um, that's all. Let's get on with the episode and out onto the mountains. I've been working away on some drawing commissions in the background lately. I don't take on commissions very often, but sometimes a job comes along and I just can't say no. And one client who can reliably offer me a job that I can't refuse are my pals over at John Arben Textiles. Um, if you're not familiar with them, John Arben are a women-owned company in Devon. They spin worsted yarns, the most incredible yarns out of British fibres. They used to be my local mill when I lived in Devon, and I'm very fond of them. So when they asked me to create some exclusive products for their mill open weekend, which is coming up extremely soon, I couldn't say no. And I've been having the best time working on these illustrations. So the brief was to create some illustrations depicting sheep having taken over the mill for the day. So we've got sheep operating one of the gilling machines and sheep just bumbling around in the mill, drinking tea, having cake, 
um, transporting skeins of yarn, bobbins, you know, all the things that mill folk do in a busy day at work. And I have just had the loveliest time working on these illustrations. Now, the plan for them was to turn them into a bag and a set of stickers, which will be sold in person at the Mill Open Weekend, which is coming up on the 16th to 18th of June. But there's also a virtual Open Weekend in case uh, you are geographically challenged and can't make it to the face-to-face -face event. There's a virtual weekend coming up. I think it's the 8th and 9th of July, and these products will be available online then as well. So let's talk about the illustrations. I've been working in my lovely Pigma Micron ink pens. This is a pen that has an ink that's permanent when it's dry. So that means that I can add washes of color over the top afterwards without smudging any of my lines. So I sketch the design in pencil first, and then I work on the outlines in this fine black ink. Once I'm satisfied and done with the outlines, I will gently erase the pencil lines. And then I add the color using what looks like watercolors, but it's actually diluted colored inks. And I use these inks because like the Pigma Micron pen, they're permanent when they're dry, um, which is different to watercolors. When watercolors dry, if you wet them again, you can kind of blend and soften the colors. Um, but it does mean if you're clumsy like me, you can spill something on them and ruin your work. Whereas with these colored inks, um, that doesn't happen. But it does mean that the marks I make with these colors are more permanent. So I need to be a little bit careful not to make any mistakes. Now I've just had some very exciting deliveries and I actually have the finished products to show you. So these are the stickers. They're gonna come in a set of three sheets. Um, the first sheet is sheep actually at work. There's one carrying bobbins, one carrying yarn, and one with their arms in a bucket of fiber. And then the second sheets are a little bit more relaxed. So these sheep are obviously on a break. One's having a cup of tea, one's doing a dance with a spanner, and there are teacups and slices of cake around. And then in this one, the sheep are crafting. So we've got one who is winding a skein of yarn, one who's working with a drop spindle, and there is some knitting, some crochet, and a few skeins of yarn around as well. I think you can probably tell how much fun I had working on these. Um, I'm very excited. I don't know where I'm going to stick mine, but... Um, I'm really, really pleased with how they came out. It's always a risk when you send an illustration off to print. You don't know exactly how the colors are going to come out, how things are going to look, but these came out exactly as I imagined, and I'm so happy with them. But as if that wasn't exciting enough, I also received this exciting thing. This is the bag that I designed. We've got two sheep. We've got a Jacob sheep and a Merino. And those have been chosen on purpose because there's a special limited edition yarn also coming out for the open weekend, which is a blend of Jacob and Merino. Um, and then these, these two sheep are working away on the gilling machine, which is called Cuthbert. All of the machines at John Arben Textiles Mill have names, and this is the one we chose to illustrate for the bag. And again, you can tell how much fun I had working on this illustration, and I'm just so pleased with how the finished bag turned out. It's very exciting. So um, that's what's been keeping me occupied with my drawing lately. I haven't had much time to think about my personal projects, um, be it my sheep detail or my imaginary artist residency that I was talking about in the last episode. But now that those projects are signed off and finished, um, 
well, I was going to say it will be back to work. Actually, it will be down to Devon. I'm vending at the John Arman Textiles open weekend. So I'm taking my little online shop and all of my goodies to um, to sell and meet some folks face to face. So if you're going to be one of the people who's there, I look forward to meeting you. Um, and if you're not, then there will be lots of celebrations online coming up at the virtual event in July as well. Um, so that's going to keep me busy for the next few weeks. Um, probably not too much drawing while I um, travel and go and enjoy that event, but um, I'm sure I'll be back with some more drawing soon. <laughs> Let's talk about knitting because I have a very exciting finished project to share with you. You've probably already guessed what it is. It's my like and fancier cardigan. Um, when I last spoke to you, I was busting a gut to get this finished for a photo shoot and I'm very happy to say I made it just in time. Um, you've probably seen, if you follow my pals John Arban Textiles on Instagram, it was their photo shoot. I was helping out as an assistant, um, but I asked permission to have my a cardigan photographed as part of that. Um, I'm not going to share the photos with you now because I don't want to get everyone too excited about it yet. I have a lot of work to do to bring this pattern out. It is, as I can sure, I'm sure you can tell by looking at it, slightly complicated. Um, obviously it's stranded colour work all over from the body right through to the sleeves and that means it's knitted entirely in the round and then steaked. There are six steaks, one for the front, one for the neckband, one each for the armholes and one each for the top of the sleeves. So it's a very involved knit and it's going to be a complicated pattern for me to write up. So I just wanted to show you that it's finished, it's in the works and it's going to disappear for a few months now while I work on it and get it ready to come out into the world. But I'm very, very excited to have finished that cardigan. I almost can't believe it. Um, when I picked it up again before the photo shoot, I had maybe about six inches of the body knitted and I managed to knit and finish the rest of the thing in about four weeks, which feels like an achievement. And I didn't knit for a few days after finishing it. I just needed a bit of a rest. My fingers needed to recover, but I have since pulled out a couple of existing projects. Um, there are two here. You've seen both of them before. Uh, the first is my Madara shawl. This is by um, Inisa Sang and it was from Amarisu magazine. I'm uh, 
uh, slightly panicking because as I've pulled it out of the bag, some of the stitches have fallen off the end of the needle. So I'm going to need to get some of those needle stoppers to look after this project. Apologies for the interruption there. My uh, glamorous assistant decided that he wanted to show his face to talk about knitting. So uh, here he is. Um, where was I? Is that it? You just wanted to show your face and go away. Okay. See you later. <laughs> this is the Madara shawl and I'm working on the body, which has worked kind of side to side. So you cast on at this point. You work to the point of a triangle, which is here. Gosh, it's hard to show you a shawl. Um, and then I'll work decreases to the other point of the triangle. So it makes a long, narrow triangle shape, which I will then pick up stitches along the bottom edge to work the border. Um, and yes, I haven't looked at this for a few weeks, so I need to take a moment to kind of reorientate myself to the chart and figure out what exactly is going on, but I am looking forward to picking this one back up again. The yarn I'm using is two yarns that I purchased at Wonderwool, not this year, but last year. The main color, this beautiful kind of bronzy, greeny gold is from Zakami Yarns. It's a blue-faced Lester and Massam. And I bought some of the same blend from um, Sinead at Gullrock Fibres in this beautiful green. Turns out the two yarns were different weights. The, um, the main yarn is a four ply and the Gullrock Fibres contrast is a DK. But I think that's just going to add to the kind of contrast of colours and textures with this shawl. There's lots going on. There's lace, there's bobbles, there's colour work. Um, the fact that there's two different weights of yarn in there, I think isn't going to matter too much. So I am looking forward to getting back on with that one, but so far no progress has been made. I have put in a few rows on this project. Do you remember this one? This is my frog jumper. Um, now, when I last talked about this, a few people thought that this was my design, um, which it isn't. The frog chart is by the designer Lena Holm Samso, um, and it's for a children's jumper called uh, Verna Fro. Um, and I just decided that I loved the chart so much, I wanted to make an adult version for myself. So I am drafting this pattern into an adult size, but I will not be selling the finished pattern because the frog chart is not mine. Um, I have the designer's permission to use it to make myself a garment, but obviously I can't sell this jumper when it's finished. So this is just going to be a unique froggy jumper for me. Um, the two yarns I'm using here are my ever favourite Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift in the colour Lichen. Nobody is surprised that that's my favourite. It's a beautiful beige with tiny hints of green in it. Um, and the green matches really well with this mohair blends. It's a blend of Manx and mohair from Blackie Yarns. Um, I think this colour is called Laydock Woods. Um, and I love how the subtle sheen of the mohair is making my frogs ever so slightly shiny. Um, so the plan is to knit this entire jumper in the round, much like my lichen cardigan, and have steaks for the armholes. It's going to be a much more straightforward jumper. It's just going to be a straight body, no shaping, and then no armhole shaping either. I'm just going to do straight body and then drop shoulders with um, fairly straight sleeves down to a, a simple cuff. It's going to be a very straightforward jumper. The hero is going to be this frog colorwork pattern. And I have put in a couple of rounds on this since I picked it up, but I have to say I'm not really feeling either of these projects. Do you know what I really want to do? Cast on something new. Do you ever get that when you finished a project? Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm mulling over what that's going to be. I think 
because I've got two big projects going on, it will have to be something small, like an accessory or a pair of socks, just a kind of palette cleanser project after the big push to finish the lichen cardigan. So I'm mulling that over and um, I'll let you know what I decide on that one. We haven't talked about spinning for a while, and that's because I haven't done any spinning for a while, but I did realise I'd forgotten to show you my first finished garment quantity. Um, I think I showed it off on Instagram and then forgot to talk about it on one of my videos. So here it is, and I couldn't be more proud of it. Um, this was a limited edition fibre blend from my pals at John Arben Textiles. Um, this came out in 2020, I think it was around the time of the first lockdown. Um, it's called Barn Owl and it's a blend of different British wools. Um, it was a joy to spin and if you've been watching my videos for a while you've probably watched me progress extremely slowly on this spin over the past year. I had about 450 grams of fibre, I split it as evenly as I could into three and spun onto three separate bobbins of singles which I then combined into a traditional three ply. I have three skeins of probably in total about 400 grams altogether, which isn't a generous garment quantity. I'm thinking it's going to have to be a t-shirt, but what I do have, if I can reach up here, is a little bit of singles left, just on the one bobbin. The two bobbins were pretty well matched, but the third bobbin, I, I think it was when we were moving house, I had packed my other two bobbins away and I was working on the last bobbin, and I didn't have the others to hand for reference and I ended up spinning finer and finer. So one of the plies is finer than the others and I do have this little bit left over. So 
So I thought what I would do, I mean, one option would be to chain ply it. So to that's how you make a three ply yarn from just one singles. I could do that. That would probably give me about 20 grams of extra yarn. It's not going to go very far. Instead, what I thought I would do is combine it with something else. I've got this bundle of uh, plain undyed swap balls fiber, also from John Alvin Textiles. Um, and I quite like how the two colors work together. Um, so I was thinking I would spin up two small bobbins of singles about this quantity in the plain swap balls and make a three ply marl. So it'd be two plies of the dark, dark brown, one ply of my barn owl, and it will make a kind of contrasting color that I can use with this hand spun to make it a little, make it go a little further. Either I might use it in a stripe or what I was imagining was obviously this to be the main color for a garment and then use the dark mild contrast as the ribbing. So the collar, the hem, the cuffs, maybe a little cute patch pocket might be nice. Obviously, that's a project that is many months down the line. Um, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to share my finished yarn with you because I'm so incredibly proud of it. It's It definitely looks like hand spun. It's not completely consistent and there are definitely parts of it that could be more even, but overall, I think it looks brilliant. And actually, I don't want to make hand spun that looks just like yarn I could buy. It's full of character and I'm really, really proud of it. Somehow I've managed to restrain myself from swatching with it and casting on already. As you've seen, I've got other projects that clearly need finishing first. So I'm going to try and attend to them while I spin up this swap balls to make the final bit of yarn to combine with this before I cast on. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and joining me. I hope whatever creative projects you're working on, they're progressing smoothly and you're enjoying them. Um, thanks again to folks on Patreon who support and make these projects possible. Um, you can find links down below if you want to sign up for Patreon. Leave me a tip on coffee, which I usually put towards buying Jack a treat. Um, you can find my online shop down there. And if financial support isn't possible for you, you can always show your support by leaving a comment, passing the word on. If you enjoyed my videos, let somebody else know if you think they might enjoy them too. Thank you again for being here. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.